Hey, this is Del Shanzi, and uh, here to explain another horrible crash uh, that really this type of thing just should not, it just does not have to happen because there's so many things that have to go wrong in order for something like this to happen. And so there's ways to stack the odds in your favor with proper training and gear where if you don't do that, it's things like this can happen. So let me just show you the video first and look at it and then I'll explain what happened. Okay, there's many, many things going on here and there's many aspects of training that address this and there's many aspects of the gear that would address what's going on and how to prevent this. So straight off the bat, the guy runs and jumps into his seat while torquing sideways while running the wrong direction. So you'll notice his glider's going off this way and he runs and jumps into the seat going this way. That makes the motor start pushing you off to the side and the glider starts going back to the side. So it's absolutely critical that you run and run the direction that your glider is facing. So at super training, you know, this is basic 101 things that should be addressed on the ground. So you'll see that over and over and over we're talking to people about how to relax and let the risers tell them which way to run instead of getting in their minds that, hey, I'm going to run that way. And then people just ignore where their glider is. So the risers don't want to be twisted. Think about when you were younger in a swing set and you're hanging from the swing set and you twist yourself up in the swing set and then you let go and you swing back to center. Well, it's exactly the same with the risers. Those risers do not want to be twisted. And so if you're taught to relax and feel the direction the risers want you to point, the risers want you to point the same direction as the glider's going. Those risers will really fight to prevent you from being facing that way when your glider's going that way. So to mess that up, you really have to be completely oblivious. And it's very common though, with people who just don't have enough training um, and haven't really been taught to address this issue. So to start right off, if you run and jump in your seat this way, your glider's going to dive off this way and because of the thrust of the motor, the motor can start dragging the glider and make that situation unrecoverable if you don't immediately recognize it. Now, there's more pieces that happen. Next, he jumped into his seat. Again, this is why we do hundreds of flights at super training. You know, we just had a student set a world record. He knocked out 500 and 30 flights at super training. 530 in his 10 days of super training. It takes massive amounts of experience to iron out all these little pieces because people start doing all these little things and it's critical that you do it over and over and over and start ironing it out, ironing out, ironing every single little detail. So this guy runs and he jumps into the seat, which is a basic newbie, you know, don't ever do that. You want to make sure you let the unit lift you off the ground. Uh, next, he's not taught at all about weight shift or torque control. And I've done other videos on this as well, where you see, I've literally pointed out fake instructors 
intentionally just literally not teaching people the basic 101 of flight where you go to them for instruction and they don't even teach you how to weight shift and don't even teach you how to interact and to eliminate torque through weight shift. So you notice the guy jump into his seat and so now he's leaning way backwards, which now if you lean backwards, instead of the torque rolling you, the torque now wants to twist you up in the risers, which is a lot more difficult to resist than when you're getting rolled to the side. If the torque rolls you to the side, that's really simple. You just weight shift to the left if it's torquing right. And if you have an engine that torques left, you weight shift to the right and that eliminates that unit from rolling. But if you lean way over backwards where it's twisting you in the risers, it's more difficult to the resist that. And so that comes from more of the feel of making sure that you're going the same direction as your glider. So this guy jumps into the seat the wrong direction and leans way back when he jumps into the seat. He does not control the torque, which leans him completely sideways, and he doesn't weight shift, and so he's totally butt wild cockeyed sideways. And we haven't even gotten to the why the gear makes this happen. We're gonna keep going through the pilot's issues. So all of those pieces are wrong. Now it gets worse. He buries the brakes. So now he pulls way too much brakes, making it much more difficult for the glider to recover because now he's pulling brakes against uh, the, the risers trying to untwist him. Uh, where if you let your hands up, the risers naturally want to untwist you. So if you're not burying the brakes, it's easier for the, that swing set to settle. So imagine if you're in the swing set, but you're trying to hold yourself twisted. Well, the swing doesn't want to untwist because you're holding against it. And it's the same sort of principle as he's burying the brakes uh, just a ridiculously long way, which again, if you had an instructor that ran you through, you know, hundreds of flights, ironing out all these details, that's where you learn this. You should be learning this from an actual instructor, learning it from training, because, you know, this is just horrific for this stuff to happen. And it's very simply because of negligent instructors that simply didn't train the people properly. Um, it's just the way it goes. Okay, so now he's burying the brakes. But wait, it's worse. Now, immediately off of launch, he then makes a left turn against the torque. So now he's leaning way back. He's torqued to the side. He didn't weight shift properly. He jumped the wrong direction, so his glider's going that way, and now he tries to turn left when his glider's going off to the right. And then, on top of that, he buries full throttle and leaves it throttled. So then he starts twisting up in the risers, and well, we'll get into the, the, the gear part of this next. But he starts twisting up in the risers, and he just simply doesn't have the experience or the forethought to let off the throttle. If he would have just let off the throttle and put his hands up, immediately everything would basically try and fix itself and he would swing back onto the glider and the glider, you know, the risers are gonna try and untwist him. Um, but he doesn't, he holds the throttle, he spins up in the risers, and as soon as that thrust goes backwards to the direction the glider's going, the glider dives straight at the ground, he's riser twist, face plants, face first into the ground. I believe he broke his back. And it's really sad because it's just, it's horrifying. I try and help people and I explain these things and I warn people not to get the absolute worst gear. And I warn people to look at the skill of the person they go to for training and look at the skill level of other people they've trained. I mean, if you were gonna go to this instructor and you notice their students are riser twisting out of the sky and face planting into the ground over and over and over, it, you know, obviously this is not the place to go for instruction. You've gotta see all of these little pieces being addressed in that glider control and in the instruction. Okay, so every single one of these pieces that he did wrong, all together, that's the instructional part of it that should be addressed. Now, 
Is it possible for someone with the best training in the world to go do the same thing? Yes. Yes, it is. It's about the odds. So if some Joe Blow goes and just does everything wrong after training, it is possible, but it's about the odds. This is, you know, it's thousands and thousands and thousands of times more likely to happen if the person was not very specifically trained. The odds of it happening, if they're trained properly, is so remote, it just, it eliminates the 99.9% .9 of the odds of that happening. You know, you can always just be an idiot and go full throttle and jump this way and just do all kinds of stupid stuff, but that's what the training is. The training is all about the odds. You could try and go fly all by yourself and you might actually live through your first flight or two. It's about the odds. You also might die. What are the odds you're going to live if you have no training versus what are the odds you're going to live if you have the best training in the world? It's the odds are different. So obviously getting the best training is going to drastically reduce the odds of this stuff happening. Now let's go through the gear. This is again the incompetency and dishonesty of the instructor because it's the instructor's job to prepare that student with the absolute best and safest gear. And in this case, once again, he was actually uh, pushed towards the absolute worst and least safe gear in all of history. So this is yet another Scout uh, clone. It's, it's not Scout, but Sky Cruiser. The Scout is another Sky Cruiser clone. So the Sky Cruiser was basically uh, the basic type of design like this unit with the stupid floppy bars that do nothing and allow the unit to torque all over. Um, the Scout paramotor, the Black Hawk, the mini plane, Parajet, like this unit, these are all Scout clones, excuse me, Sky Cruiser clones. It's the exact same design with some different, you know, polish or paint color on them. And none of them had have had a single safety update to address any of these issues. So these units are, literally have not had a safety update for over 40 years and these exact same things keep happening over and over and over and over and then the guy was sold the absolute worst and most deadly glider a glider they call reflex i've already done many videos showing you just how deadly these gliders are that they call reflex they're not reflex because there's no such thing as a reflex pair glider because you can't push a string, there's no stability. So the rear does not push down and stabilize the front. Doesn't happen, there's zero reflex to a paraglider, so it's a complete scam. But a totally uncertified hoax flex glider is horrifically inefficient and they're very terrible at managing torque. So they pronounce the torque steer. So if you take a unit that has terrible weight shift and torque with a pilot who's not even trained, and put them on a hoax flex glider, again, you're compounding the issue to where that unit requires even more power to stay in the air and they, they pronounce the torque even worse. So you're a lot more likely to twist up in the risers with a totally uncertified death trap uh, glider like this. But the main issues <coughs> are actually in the paramotor. Now, the standard bars, as you notice, these floppy bars are about 16 inches wide. The typical person, as you notice, these bars are only as wide as the pilot is. So they're literally touching the side of his body. So if you have no room between the risers, how do you weight shift? Weight shift is the ability to shift your weight inside of those risers. Um, but of course, this guy wasn't even taught weight shift, not to mention he's on a unit that the weight shift is just, it's terrible. It just is not a good unit because the bars are so narrow, he has no real uh, distance to be able to shift his weight in order to be able to create weight shift. The flat top paramotor has the best weight shift on the market because instead of 16 inch wide bars, the bars are 22 inches wide. Now the certified width for a certified glider 
is generally 22 and a half inches. So the flat top is a certified width and height hook in point. Um, this unit has the super narrow bars and so the weight shift is just nowhere near as good as a unit with the, the, uh, the weight shift kit which is going to be much, much wider, allowing you to shift your weight inside of that control surface like a hang glider. Um, next, <clears throat> the width of those hook in points uh, have to do with how easy it is to twist up in the risers. So if you have floppy bars that are very close together, obviously, the closer the bars are together, the easier it is to spin up in the risers. Obviously, if you widen the hook in points, now it's much harder because you have a much wider leverage keeping the risers apart, making it much, much, much harder to spin up in the risers. Plus the high hook in points that are not the certified height right down where they're supposed to be, just like paragliding. If you raise those hook in points, Again, you're intensifying and making it easier for the unit to twist up into the risers. So the gear has all of the odds stacked against him, making it as difficult as possible on top of literally none of his training. He didn't even do one single thing. He got every single piece wrong to make this accident happen. So again, this has almost nothing to do with the real actual sport where people get proper training, where they're trained each and every piece to address this and try and minimize the odds of this ever happening with proper training. So proper training would drastically reduce the odds to such a huge extent it's like it has nothing to do with the real sport. It's just you don't see it. And then, of course, having the right gear. The flat top is the only unit on the market that's really well designed to address this type of issue and many other issues, as well as the crumple zone and the protection from the prop. You know, watch the whole video series of the 304 reasons competent pilots only fly flat tops. And then, of course, the totally uncertified glider. And then, on top of that, no reserve. As soon as he started twisting up in his risers, he should have immediately let off the throttle, which could have fixed the problem. But as soon as he saw that the problem was terminal and he was heading for the ground, those reserves are designed to open in as little as 40 feet. Now, I chucked one once at 70 feet, and it was open by 60 feet. So it opened in 10 feet. You'll hear a lot of bull crap about people say, you know, oh, we don't need a reserve. We fly too low. Total flat out lie. Those reserves are designed to open instantly. There is no slider. It's just a simple round reserve. Just like the little army guys you played with when you're a kid and you wrap the parachute around his head and you chuck it and it still opens, even though it's wrapped up completely around his body. That's what we're using, a simple round reserve. They're designed to open instantly. So had he had a reserve, very likely he could have gotten a reserve out and totally, again, added one more thing in his favor. So the best gear in the world and the best training in the world makes this on the opposite end of reality of the sport. Obviously, anything's possible, even if you have the best gear in the world and the best training, logically, yes, you can still die. It's just the difference in odds being 99% chance you're gonna have the problem versus 99% chance you're not gonna have the problem. Gigantic, huge difference. So those interested in the sport, keep in mind, I'm the wild man. I'm, you know, the guy out there doing things nobody else on earth can do. And if I'm doing what nobody else on earth can do, yes, that makes me the best pilot in the world. So here I am, likely the most experienced and best pilot in the world who's pushing the limits and doing wild stuff and doing things nobody on earth can do. And I've never even been injured because I have the right skills and I'm flying the gear that stacks all the odds in my favor. 
all four of my kids are pilots. None of them have ever been injured. And yeah, we're out there pushing limits and doing wild things and having fun, but we're flying the absolute best and safest gear. This sport is incredibly safe if people just get super training and the best gear in the world, which would be a flat top, specifically a flat top paramotor. Uh, the best glider is a Dominator. That's the best one on the market currently. And then a reserve. It's not rocket science. Stack the odds in your favor. Do things right. Go to people that know what they're doing and know how to train you properly to stack those odds in your favor instead of having all the odds stacked against you. So, you know, again, five more people dead in the last matter of weeks when it just, if they'd have had proper gear, it's just a whole different opposite end of spectrum as far as the safety. And it's so sad because these people are getting scammed into gear and a lot of people just have no idea that someone acting as an instructor is not just completely ignorant and doesn't have even the most basic skills, but they're blatantly dishonest. So you have to look at the skill level of who you're talking to. Look at the skill level of the people that they've trained. Look at the facts and characteristics of the gear and base decisions off facts, logic, and reason and not about fantasies and bull crap and name calling and trash talking. Look at the facts and be safe through intelligence and wisdom and wise decisions.